Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at a really useful feature in Entity Framework Core, Global Query Filters. If you've ever written the same where condition over and over in your queries, you know how easy it is to forget it once and cause bugs or even expose sensitive data. Global Query Filters solve that problem by applying those conditions automatically across all queries. Let's walk through what they are, when to use them, and how they've been improved in .NET 10. Before we continue, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Entity Framework Extensions. If you're working with EF Core, you know performance can sometimes be a challenge. EF Extensions help solve that by offering bulk operations like bulk insert, bulk update, and bulk delete that run up to 14x faster than the default EF Core operations. I'll drop a link in the description so you can check it out and see how it can speed up your EF Core projects. So, what exactly is a global query filter? In simple terms, it's a condition that EF Core automatically applies to all queries for a given entity. Think of it like a permanent WHERE clause that's defined once in your model and then applied everywhere by EF Core. This is super helpful when you have rules that should always apply. For example, you might want to hide soft deleted records, make sure data is isolated per tenant in a multi-tenant app, or keep archived records out of everyday queries. Now let's talk about some practical use cases for global query filters. The first one is soft deletion. Instead of physically removing a row from the database, we mark it as deleted with an isDeleted flag. Global filters then automatically hide those rows from queries. The second is multi-tenancy. In SaaS applications, multiple companies or tenants share the same database, but each one should only see their own data. A global filter ensures tenant isolation without you having to remember it in every query. And finally, we have archiving old data. Some records need to stay in the database for compliance or reporting, but we don't want them cluttering up everyday queries. A filter keeps them hidden by default but still accessible when needed. These are some of the most common ways global query filters can make your application safer and easier to maintain. All right, let's see this in action with some code. I've created a brand new .NET 10 web API project, and we're going to walk through how to implement soft deletion using global query filters. Before we move forward, I've already installed the required libraries in my project. Here you can see I'm targeting .NET 10, and I've added the necessary NuGet packages for EF Core. That includes Microsoft.Entity Framework Core, the SQLite provider, and Entity Framework Core, tools for migrations. In this project, we're going to use SQLite as the database provider. That's why you'll notice the Microsoft.Entity Framework Core. SQLite package added to the project. This gives EF Core the ability to talk to SQLite database. We'll start by creating a simple blog entity with an isDeleted property, then configure our application DB context to automatically exclude deleted blogs. The first step is to add our blog entity inside an entities folder. This is the table we'll use throughout the demo to show how global query filters work. So now our blog class is a sealed class, and it's going to have three properties, ID, name, and is deleted. We'll specifically use the is deleted flag later when we set up our soft delete scenario, where instead of physically removing a blog from the database, we'll just mark it as deleted and let the global query filter hide it from normal queries. Now I'm adding an application DB context in the data folder. I've made this class sealed, and now I'm going to inherit from DB context. Here I'm using a primary constructor, which lets me pass the options directly to the base DB context without writing the old boilerplate constructor. You might see Copilot or IntelliSense suggest this code automatically, but instead of just accepting it, I'll go ahead and type it out so you can clearly see what's happening. Now that our application DB context is set up, the next step is to add a DB set for our blog entity. This basically tells EF Core that we want to create a table for blog objects in the database and that we'll be able to query and save blog records through this property. Next, I'm going to override the onModelCreating method. Inside here, I'll add a global query filter. This filter will automatically exclude any blogs that are soft deleted, meaning there is deleted flag is set to true. With this filter in place, every query against the blogs table will automatically ignore deleted records, unless we explicitly choose to bypass the filter. So here, model builder, entity blog, is telling EF Core that we're configuring the blog entity. Then we call that has query filter b equals b dot is deleted. This is the key part. What it means is, for every query that EF Core generates against the blog's entity, it will automatically add a condition that says only include blogs where is deleted is false. 
In other words, if a blog is marked as deleted, it's completely invisible in normal queries. We don't have to remember to add where is deleted equals zero everywhere in our code. Yef Core handles it for us automatically. I've already set up some endpoints for our blog API. Let's quickly walk through them. First, we have the get slash API slash blogs endpoint. This one returns all blogs, but remember, because of our global query filter, it will only show the blogs that are not soft deleted. So deleted ones stay hidden automatically. Next, there's get slash API slash blog slash all. Here, I've added that ignore query filters. What this does is tell EF Core, ignore the soft delete filter. That means this endpoint will return every blog, including those that are marked as deleted. This is useful if, for example, an admin needs to see everything. Then we have get slash API slash blog slash ID. This will fetch a single blog by its ID. And thanks to the filter, if that blog is soft deleted, this endpoint won't return it unless we bypass the filter. Finally, there's a post slash API slash blogs endpoint that lets us create a new blog and save it into the database. Nothing fancy here, just straightforward insert logic. The delete endpoint isn't here yet. We'll be adding that shortly to complete our soft deletion scenario. Next, we'll add our connection string inside the app settings.json file. Here I've added a new section called connection strings and defined one called default connection. This tells EF Core to use SQLite database and it will create the file appdb inside the data folder of our project. Now, let's go to program.cs and register our db context with dependency injection. This tells EF Core to use SQLite as our database provider with a connection string we just added in app settings.json. Now that our db context is registered, the next step is to wire up our endpoints. So here in program.cs, we just need to register them with one line, app map log endpoints. This will map all the routes we created earlier, like get all blogs, get by ID, create, and all blogs ignoring filters. All right, now everything is set up, the DB context, connection string, and endpoints are all in place. The next step is to create the database schema using EF Core migrations. I'll open the package manager console and run add migration initial. This will generate a migration file that creates the blogs table in our SQLite database. Now that the migration is created, the next step is to apply it to our database. For that, I'll run the command update database. This will create the SQLite database inside the data folder and generate the blogs table with our properties, ID, name, and is deleted. So now our database is ready to use with the global query filter in place. To make testing easier, I've also created a .http file. This file contains sample requests for all the endpoints we just set up. A request to get blogs with the global query filter applied. Another one to get all blogs while ignoring the global query filter. A request to fetch a single blog by ID. And finally, a request to create a new blog. All right, let's run the application and start testing. First, I'll check the get all blogs endpoint. As expected, it's returning an empty array. And that makes sense, because we don't have any blogs in the database yet. Now, let's go ahead and create a new blog using the post endpoint. I'll send a request with some sample data. And once it's saved, we should see the new blog added to our database. As expected, we got back a 201 created response along with the blog details, including the new ID assigned by the database. That means our blog has been successfully created. All right, now let's run the get all blogs endpoint again. This time, we should see the blog we just created in the response. And yes, as expected, the API returns an array with our newly created blog. Now, let's run the get all blogs with ignore query filters endpoint. This one bypasses the global filter we added earlier. Right now, since we don't have any soft deleted blogs yet, it returns the same result as the normal get endpoint. But later, when we soft delete a blog, you'll see the difference clearly. Now, let's add delete endpoint. This won't physically remove the row. Let's take a closer look at how the soft deletion is applied. So when we send a delete request with a blog ID, EF Core will first try to find the blog in the database using find async. If no blog exists with that ID, we return a 404 not found response. If the blog does exist, we call blogs remove. This tells EF Core to mark that entity as deleted. Then we save the changes with save changes async. Finally, the endpoint returns a 204 no content response. 
which is the standard way of saying the delete was successful, but there's nothing to return in the body. At this point, the delete endpoint is working, but it's a hard delete. That means when you delete a blog, it's completely gone from the database. In many real-world applications, we don't want to lose the data permanently. Instead, we mark it as deleted using a flag like is deleted equals true. That's what's called soft deletion. To achieve this, we'll update our DB context to intercept deletes and convert them into soft deletes. Now I'm going to override save changes async method in the application DB context. I've overridden the save changes async method. Here's what happens. Whenever EF Core tries to delete a blog entity, instead of physically removing it from the database, we intercept it. In this block, I'm looping through the change tracker entries for the blog entity. Change tracker entries gives me every blog entity EF Core is currently tracking. Then I filter to only those where the state is deleted. For each one, I don't let EF Core remove it from the database. Instead, I change the state to modified, and then I set the isDeleted property to true. This is the key part of soft deletion. From the outside, it looks like a delete, but internally we just mark the record. The database row remains, so it can still be audited or even restored later if needed. Now let's add the delete endpoint in the .http file and run the application. Right now, we have one blog stored in the database. Let's go ahead and delete it by its ID using the delete endpoint. We sent the delete request, and as expected, we got a 204 no content response. That means the request was successful, and the blog was soft deleted. Now, when I fetch the blogs using the regular list endpoint, the result comes back as an empty array, because our global query filter is kicking in and hiding the deleted record. But if I try the endpoint that skips the filter, you'll notice the blog still exists in the database. The only difference is that its is deleted flag is set to true. So, we just saw the delete in action. The blog didn't actually disappear from the database. Instead, its is deleted flag was flipped to true. Now, here's the important part. When we call the regular list endpoint, YEF Core automatically applies the global query filter, so that soft deleted record is hidden. But when we use the all blogs endpoint, where we explicitly tell YEF Core to ignore the filter, the same record shows up again. Only this time we can see it's marked as deleted. This is the essence of soft deletion. We don't lose the data. We just hide it from normal queries. That means we can always restore it later or keep it around for auditing purposes. Now, before EF Core 10, global query filters came with some pretty big limitations. The first one is that you could only define one filter per entity. If you wanted multiple rules, like soft deletion and tenant isolation, you had to cram them into a single expression. That worked, but it meant you couldn't easily disable just one filter. The second limitation was about disabling filters. If you used ignore query filters, EF Core would strip out all the filters for that entity. So if you wanted to bypass soft deletion but still keep tenant isolation, that wasn't possible. These two issues made global query filters a little inflexible. And that's exactly what EF Core 10 improves with its new named filters feature. In EF Core 10, things got a lot better with the introduction of named filters. Now, instead of being restricted to one filter per entity, you can define multiple filters. For example, one for soft deletion, another for tenant isolation, and maybe even a third for role-based access. Even better, you can now disable just one filter selectively using ignore query filters, filter name. That means you can ignore the soft delete rule while still keeping tenant isolation in place, something that wasn't possible before. Overall, this makes your filters cleaner, more modular, and far more flexible, especially in applications that need multiple layers of data protection. All right, let's see how we can implement named filters in EF Core 10. In the ignore query filters method, I'll pass in the name of the filter, in this case, soft delete filter. This way, EF Core will ignore only that specific filter instead of disabling all filters on the entity. Now in our endpoint, I've updated the get all route to use ignore query filters, soft delete filter. This tells EF Core to bypass only the soft delete filter while still keeping any other filters applied to the blog entity. That means we now have fine grain control we can selectively ignore filters instead of turning them all off. Instead of hard-coding filter names directly into the endpoint, we can define them in a dedicated static class. For example, I am going to create a blog filters class with constants for each filter. This way, if the filter name ever changes, we only update it in one place. It keeps the code cleaner, avoids typos, 
and makes the filters easier to reuse across multiple endpoints. Now, I'll move the blog filters class into a separate file. In the on model creating method, I've now assigned a name to the global filter using blog filters dot soft delete filter. And in the endpoint, instead of hard coding the filter name as a string, I'm now referencing blog filters dot soft delete filter. All right, let's run the application and see this in action. First, I'll call the get blogs endpoint, and as expected, it only returns blogs that are not soft deleted. Here we don't have a blog. Now, let's go ahead and create a new blog. Once we send the request, we should see a 201 created response along with the details of the newly created blog. All right, now let's run the get all blogs endpoint again. This time, instead of an empty array, we can see one blog is available in the response, the one we just created. Now let's run the get all blogs without query filters endpoint. As expected, we can see two blogs here, one that we just created and the other one that was previously deleted but is still stored in the database. This shows how the global query filter hides soft deleted records by default, but when we bypass it, those records become visible again. All right, that's a wrap. Today we explored global query filters in EF Core, how they help apply rules like soft deletion automatically across all queries, the limitations and versions before EF Core 10, and the new named filters feature that gives us more flexibility. We also implemented a practical soft delete scenario, tested it with endpoints, and saw how filters work both with and without being ignored. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you won't miss upcoming tutorials. I've got more EF Core content planned, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and happy coding.